Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Wednesday, November 3rd. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're somebody that uses technical charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about the tool of charts and how it can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick before I get started, just keep in the back of your mind that if you're enjoying what you see and you want to learn more about this tool and how it can be used to build consistency, then I want to personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class I'm offering on Thursday. So if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can click on. Or if you're watching at my site, then there's an area right there on the webpage that you can click on. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And if you're liking what you see, then definitely get signed up. A couple quick things before I get started. First off, I will be doing the 30 minute time frame. So if you're new to all this, what do I mean by that? I just mean that each one of these candlesticks as they're called represents 30 minutes worth of time. And then also the market is still gonna be open for a little bit. So this candlestick here that you'll see on you know the various charts, you're gonna see some movement there. Cause like I said, the market does still have a little bit of time before it closes, but I like to do this when the market's still open cause sometimes we can capture some breakout movement or, or just whatever, you, you just never quite know what's gonna happen. So it can be fun to capture that live. But as far as you know, the overall things I'm gonna talk about, you know, I, I feel confident in talking about these now cause the market is almost gonna be closed. But like I said, first one here, OCGN. And this is a very difficult chart to talk about because it depends on your perspective. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're a day trader and you bought right around there and your plan was to buy and sell within 25 minutes, well then from that perspective, the chart looks terrible. Now, if you care about things from the bigger picture point of view, I understand very big pullback today. But let's just say, and I'm not saying this is what's gonna actually happen, but just for example's sake, let's say the chart once again comes down to this $12.50 mark. Bounces around and then you know just starts to head back up. Now, emphasis here on big picture. From the big picture perspective, what would you still have? Well, you'd have a set of lows right there. You'd have lows there, there, there. You'd have lows down there. If you envision each one of those as stair steps, well, hey, look at what's going on from the big picture point of view. You'd still have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. Again, I 100% understand. If you bought right there as a day trader, you don't care about these stair steps. But that's why I try to make the distinction here that from an overarching standpoint, everything is still okay, even with that big pullback there. So keep you know in mind, you know that that's the big dynamic is well, what was your actual game plan going in? As far as levels of resistance are concerned, in the very near term, keep a close eye on the $14 mark. And then if the price can push up through there, next key level up there right at the $15 mark. But overall, the trend is still intact. Uh, but yeah, from a, a near term perspective, depending on where you bought, maybe the chart looks really bad for you. Next one here, C-A-R. What a monster, monster, monster move. Crazy. I think that after a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, something's going to come out that some fund, for whatever reason, was stuck on the wrong side of this thing and imploded today. Maybe a couple of funds because this was just absolutely crazy. And then, of course, the retail trader stepped in and you know did not make the fund's life any easier. That, that's pure speculation on my part, but it just got so crazy. And we'll see if it maybe this is over. But maybe it's not. And as this one demonstrated today, it can move and move very quickly. So the level here that I'm very curious about, and I think there's probably other, a lot of other traders watching this area, but it's going to be this area of resistance right here at the $400 mark. $400, nothing is guaranteed, but is it a plausible, is it a rational thought that if the price can recover back up to $400 and then get the breakup through it, that that break right there could create and generate uh, you know, another round of momentum. Absolutely. Now, does that momentum carry it back up to $550? I don't know about that. But even if it goes up half that amount, I mean, from a risk reward standpoint, you could have a very nice setup. Uh, but from a technical point of view, like I said, I think a lot of eyeballs can be watching $400. And then from the support side of things, you can see there's the, a nice little uptrending trend line here in play. So let me get that change over here to green to represent more of a bullish dynamic. But from the shorts point of view, it's plausible and logical on their part that they're going to be watching that level. And if that area breaks, then again, nothing guaranteed, but it's at least a rational thought that if, if that tread line breaks, it could pull back some more. So, you, you know, you got to think that there's a lot of shorts also watching that area right there. But all in all, I think these are the two main levels that most people are watching. So let's see how it plays out on Wednesday. Next one, AMC in a beautiful, beautiful day. This will mean more to those of you that watched the previous uh, top 10 videos I've done. But the last video I did talked about that area of resistance right there. And you can see that earlier on today got the breakout from there and from there has continued to break out. So overall, you know, that would be the overarching context right now as the chart is in the middle of a breakout. Going to go ahead and get rid of all these lines here as they serve their uh, serve their purpose for now. But as far as new levels to watch moving forward, one of the newest areas and what I would call the ideal level of support, I mean, heck, you know, what's going to make this chart look the best moving forward? Definitely if the price can stay above 37.50. Now, if the price falls below it, that doesn't mean the entire chart's ruined or anything like that. But yeah, staying above it would be a great sign of power. 
And then from more of the overarching standpoint, the key level to watch is going to be that purple line there, the 50 period moving average. Keyword there being moving. So as time goes by, that line is going to move itself higher and higher. And it's kind of like a trend line that's going to draw itself for you. So as long as the price remains above this uptrending trend line, then overall the trend is still perfectly in the bull's favor. As far as areas of resistance are concerned, let's squeeze things down here a little bit more with the next key level now to keep a very close eye on right up there at $38.75. So $38.75, next key battleground moving forward. But all in all, got to like how the price continues to build those higher bases. That's the name of the game. Next one here, FCEL. And this will mean more to those of you that watched the previous video. But if you did, hopefully you remember me putting that green line into play there at $9. And I mean, this is just a, a real life example on the power of technical analysis. Now, if you, if you don't believe me that I had that line in there previously, Hey, I understand I could be a total stranger to you. All you got to do is go back in the video archive, watch the video that I did from yesterday, and you'll see that I put this green line in play. So I'm not trying to brag or pat myself on the back, but I am trying to illustrate the fact that, yeah, technical analysis, technical charts, they are a tool that while nothing's perfect, they should be learned and used as a trader. And like I said, we have a great example of that. So look at multiple times price came down here, found support at $9 with a nice bounce off it. So nothing has really changed in that regard. $9 is an area that you would wanna act, see act as support. And that's exactly what happened today. But if anything else, like I said, more so just an overall uh, interesting level. And then on the flip side, that red line. Again, promise I have not changed it or moved it at all. Don't believe me, like I said, just go back in the archives. But look at that, the power of technical analysis. Price went right up there, hit that red line and back down it went. So point here being is that yes, $10 is still gonna be that key area of resistance to watch moving forward. So all in all, yeah, it may be a, a, not a great day if you bought up at $10, but from an overall trend perspective, you know, just like it was on OCGN, yeah, you still have these lows getting higher and higher, the stair steps are in play, and that's what matters most. Next one here, OLB, big mover today, big volume, and maybe it's game over on this one. So that very well could be the case. Uh, but you got to keep in mind that that is a two-sided coin, meaning, well, yeah, maybe this pullback here isn't actually, uh, you know, the start of something much worse. Maybe it's just going to all of a sudden snap back upwards and try to work itself upwards. So that's always a possibility too. But you got to admit that, yeah, maybe this, you know, kind of late day bleed is, you know, just the leading indicator that it's game over. So that's why risk management, risk control, you know, must be a, a, a part of anybody's strategy. But like I said, again, maybe this thing decides to turn itself around. And the level here that I think is a good leaning indicator that maybe the, the bulls are back in town for another amount of momentum right there at $9.75. So no guarantees, but valid to think that if the price can recover back up to $9.75 and then get the breakup through it. Again, does that mean it goes up to $12? I don't know about that. But even if it goes up half that amount, you know, relative to the risk that would be there, you know, it could be a nice risk reward setup. So keep an eye on that from a resistance side of things as far as levels of support are concerned. And if you want to play more of a, a potential pullback, then right there around $7.50 is an interesting area. So let's see how this one behaves moving forward. Next one, SBEA, and same exact concept as what I just talked about on OLB. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it uh, because, yes, like OLB, maybe this is the sign that, okay, it's game over. It was a one-day wonder, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe this is just a, a little pullback before it resumes itself. So from a, you know, kind of leading indicator standpoint, the level that stands out to me is that tread line right there. Again, no guarantees, but if the price can work its way up there, get the breakup through it, then yeah, that could be a, a nice signal that this thing's ready to, to bring about some more momentum. Uh, but on the flip side of things, if you like to play more so pullbacks, well, then there's a very clear area of support down there at the $11 mark. You can see several times the price went down there and bounced right off it. Uh, but I mean, yeah, you know there's going to be shorts watching that level, and uh, you know, rightfully so, because if the price goes down there and breaks through 11, then yeah, that could be the leading indicator from the short side that, okay, the price is going to continue to go down. So, you know, that'll be a very interesting level that I, you know, $11 long shorts, everybody in between will be watching. But yeah, let's see if this is the beginning of the end, or who knows, maybe there's another nice surge in it. Next one, XELB, beautiful pattern on this one. Love the fact that it showed that it can move and move very quickly as it did right there. But the nice thing is here, it has pulled back. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I don't know, am I chasing the price? Am I suffering from FOMO? You know, fear of missing out. No, you don't have any of those concerns because the price, like I said, has pulled back and in doing so has formed a very nice pattern here. So let's just get that pattern in play. So there's the resistance portion of the pattern. Let's bring this down, change just to green to represent the support portion of the pattern. And maybe then just to make this easier, let's just make it all one color. So we have the resistance, we have the support, 
we have the momentum move right there. So this is what would be known as a bull flag pattern. Now, just because it's a bullish pattern doesn't mean that for sure guaranteed the price is going to go back upwards if only it were that easy. But if you were to say to somebody, hey, I, I like the chances that this momentum can pick back up and it can get higher because of the bull flag pattern, that's a rational thought process to have. Once more, it doesn't mean that you're going to be guaranteed to be right, but by no means is it some sort of random dart throw. I mean, there is rationality behind thinking that because yes, there is this nice bull flag pattern. So let's see if the bulls indeed can get the move back to the upside. Next one here, NIO. And overall, a good solid day. Going to get rid of that line and extend this level over because as suspected, and as I mapped out previously, this area right here around 4175, 4180 is indeed behaving very, very annoying. Now, is it exact? No, but you can see very clearly that that, that general area right there is behaving as resistance. Now, it was good to see that the price could break above it and then ran all the way up to that level. Problem is the price could not maintain itself up there. And after it fell back below it, then just went right back to struggling. Uh, but it, the price is still within striking distance. So that doesn't mean that it's going to break out on Wednesday, but it's it's certainly possible given the price only has to travel that distance before potentially breaking up through it. But the, the main point here is that right around $41.80, very clearly a stubborn and annoying level of resistance. And if that level can be broken, then the next level that was revealed after today, right up there at 42.50. As far as levels of support are concerned, continue to watch that purple line right there. As I've mentioned previously, the 50 period moving average. So as that line moves higher and higher, as long as the price is above there, then you got to like the chances that the bulls remain in control and then can eventually, you know, push up through these levels of resistance. Next one, BNGO. Talk about a blast from the past. I remember doing this one quite a bit uh, a while ago, but definitely... A lot of people are watching it all of a sudden as the volume has returned in a big way and also a very nice pattern here. So first part of the pattern that stands out to me right here at this area of resistance, $6.10. So that'll be a key breakout point. If 610 is broken, then the next overall level is just simply where the momentum stopped today. That was up there at 625. In terms of levels of support, again, pretty straightforward. You have the pullback point right there around 585 where you can see not once, but a couple other times price got down around that area and it did a good job of holding strong. But if you like to see more kind of broader pullbacks, then once again, that purple line 50 period moving average is going to, I realize it seems irrelevant right now being down here, but like I've mentioned, it is a moving average. So it'll move higher and higher and get more and more relevant. So keep an eye on that from more of the overarching standpoint. But in terms of, you know, the nearest near points that matter most, uh, certainly 610 will be that initial breakout point with 625. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the level is going to, that's going to make it look the best from a consolidation point of view is staying above 585, but you got to love the volume. You got to love the price movement. And uh, who knows, maybe BNGO is about to make a big move like it's done, uh, you know, several times in the past. Next one, PLTR and a very, very cruel day. Why do I say that? Well, just looking at things, there was this resistance area right there. And you can see that this morning price broke above it, ran up to that area. And then after there was just, Hey, just kidding. And then completely collapse to the downside. Now, at least, you know, to look at this, look at the glasses half full, at least the price is starting to bounce there a little bit, but I mean, there's also no need to try to, you know, beat around the bush. That was a brutal break. And, you know, I don't blame people for buying that breakout. That, that makes sense. That wasn't like a irrational move on their part, but that's just the nature that, you know, sometimes the market can be cruel uh, and that's what happened today. So as far as levels of support, the level here that was definitely revealed today, right down there at 25.55, you can see this is essentially where that bottoming area finally uh, you know, played out. So keep an eye on that as far as the near term level of support. And then if that level cannot hold next overall arching level of support after that, right down there around 25, if there is any sort of attempted move back to the upside and the near term got to get back above that purple line there, the 50 period moving average, since the price is down below it, that would be considered an area of resistance. And if the price can then push up through there, next key level to watch resistance wise would be right up there at 2635. But like I said, no, no need to beat around the bush. A Brutal, brutal chart today just because how cruel it was to those breakout players. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here and if you can start to see the, the you know, legitimate power, the practical, uh, you know, usefulness of technical analysis, then definitely get signed up for the class. Like I said, it'll be this Thursday, November 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So you can sign up in the description box down below if you're watching on YouTube or like I said, if you're watching on my site, someplace right there on the page itself. If, if you enjoy this, these top 10 videos, then please communicate that to me because these do, you know, take quite a bit of time and effort to put together, but I have no problem continuing to do them as long as I know that you're enjoying them, finding them helpful. So if that's the case, you're enjoying finding them helpful, hit that like button, leave a basic comment. Give me a ticker symbol that you traded today. Say hi, a number of your choosing doesn't need to be anything complicated at all, but hitting the like button, leaving a basic comment goes a long way in communicating to me that you enjoy these videos. And as long as I know that's the case, 
I will keep on making them. And again, like I said, if you wanna learn more about how to use charts and how they can be used, how they should be used to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the class. Everybody take care, have a good one.